Well, the museum is great. It's very comprehensive, and uh, it sort of fulfills the promise of a Titanic museum. It's going to show you the passengers and uh, the ship and the experience of being on the ship and the wreck and, and all that. But what was unexpected for me was the connection to Belfast's role and its rich history as a, as a shipbuilding community, as an industrial community, and what Titanic meant or means now to them and, and their, their part in the story. Well, we have a number of, of, you know, kind of iconic costumes from the film that will be displayed here on mannequins. And then there's the ship's wheel and the uh, uh, engine telegraph, the brass engine telegraph, that have been sitting in my office for the last 15 years, my, my, like my office at, at my, uh, my building. So they're now going to be on display here for a while, but I want them back. Well, look, I think that the, 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 the 3D Blu-ray format is, is phenomenal. I couldn't have even dreamed that we would have this, this technology, you know, when we set down the path of making Titanic originally. Even when we started the conversion process a few years ago, uh, it wasn't clear that there was going to be such a home market so, so early on. It was such, such good, the, the clarity, the depth, and so on. I think where we get lucky is that, is that we spent a lot of extra time and energy when we converted the film to putting as much depth in as possible. And so when you see it, not on a, on a 40 foot theater screen, but when you see it on a 50 or 60 inch uh, you know, LED or plasma screen, you'll still feel that depth, you'll feel the volume. It's like your TV set becomes a, a volume or a, or a window into the world of Titanic. I think it's quite, a, quite amazing. I'm, I'm very you know, proud of the, the final product. Well, there are a lot of deleted scenes, and there are, there are a number of them that are, you know, historical moments that were known to have happened. And ultimately, as we were cutting the film, we focused closer and closer to the Jack and Rose story, I think for obvious reasons. Um, there's one scene that we took out of the Jack Rose story where he walks her back to first class, and he can't go past that, that barrier, and he has to sort of let her go back to her world, sort of back to the castle. And it's a lovely scene. It's about three or four minutes long. And uh, it's not that it broke my heart to take it out. I knew it had to come out. But uh, it's nice to see it, see it back, see it completed with all the star fields added and so on, all the visual effects finished. Well, I think when you set yourself the task of doing a Romeo and Juliet type, you know, doomed young lover's story, uh, you've got to have great chemistry, uh, you know. And, and so it was so critical, the casting was so critical to the success of this film, and it's so hard to admit for, for a director who plans everything so meticulously and can do all the visual effects and all that, that so much of your enterprise uh, it really hinges on that, that chemistry, just what's in their eyes, just, you know, uh, and, and, and what they're not saying between the lines, you know, that you feel the, you feel the tension, you know, the sort of sexual tension, the emotional tension between them. It's so, it's so important. So, you know, the casting process is always somewhat mysterious and, and scary. Uh, we found Kate um, and, you know, just were in love with Kate for, for, uh, for Rose. And then she read with, with Leonardo and the sparks were, were very obvious. He only, he only read the scene once and uh, she, she came to me afterwards and practically grabbed my lapels and said, you have to cast him. And, uh, you know, we did, fortunately. Well, it's interesting what this trip has become, I think, you know, as I'm thinking about it more, is uh, a kind of moment of closure, if you will. Ironically, here where, where Titanic the ship was actually birthed, is kind of the end of the journey for me. I've done the expeditions, I've done three expeditions, I've done 33 dives, I've done the forensic documentaries, I've made four films on the subject, and now we're releasing the Blu-ray, which is the ultimate home media. We don't have to do anything beyond this. We've included everything in the Blu-ray that needs to be in there, every supplemental material, every deleted scene. It's not like there'll be some special new version, you know, that I have to come out and sell again. So this is kind of the end of the, the end of the journey, which is kind of cool, bittersweet. Well, I think, first of all, the, the world interest in Titanic is unabated, not just the film, but the actual history. Uh, and, and that's, you know, the, the attendance at this museum is huge. Uh, tourism has gone up so much since they, since they built this here in, in Belfast, and that's great, because it shows that people are, are willing to, to keep the story, keep the history and the memory of, of Titanic alive, which I, I think is really significant.